This morning, a biography of King Charles is offering a portrait of Britain's new monarch. Author Christopher Anderson writes that earlier this year, then Prince Charles allegedly saw a rare opportunity to make his wife Camilla queen consort instead of princess consort. According to Anderson, any money spent by Queen Elizabeth to help settle the sex abuse lawsuit brought against Prince Andrew would effectively come out of Charles's future inheritance. In what the book refers to as an informal quid pro quo, Charles allegedly seized the opportunity, not standing in the way of that payment and privately suggesting the queen make a public statement in support of Camilla becoming queen. Anderson citing two longtime and highly trusted sources. In a response to NBC News, Buckingham Palace called the claim nonsense and saying it is, quote, A, unsourced and B, categorically untrue. Anderson has covered the royal family for decades, writing multiple books, acknowledging important sources who he says agreed to cooperate only if they were permitted to remain anonymous. His latest book illustrating how King Charles grew into the monarch he is today, from the heir's lonely childhood and the chasm between Charles and his parents, to his marriage to Diana and love affair with Camilla, a king in waiting, working for decades to earn support from the public. The book also portrays him as a caring grandfather, in particular to Prince William's children, inspired by Charles's love and fond memories of the Queen Mother. As the heir to the throne, Charles has also stood in for the family when it mattered, according to Anderson, despite an alleged strained relationship with his father, Prince Philip. Anderson writes that Charles was the one he relied on to deliver updates about his health to the Queen and the rest of the family when Philip was in the hospital months before his death taking the emotional burden off of the queen. Books like this about the royal family appeal to what seems to be an endless fascination with the royals' lives behind palace doors. Now that there is a new monarch, there will likely be many more to come. So, yeah. All right, Stephanie, thank you. And joining us now exclusively is Christopher Anderson, author of The King, The Life of Charles III. Good morning. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good morning. Great to see you again. Well, I mean, you make some explosive allegations, revelations in this book. And, and let's start with what the palace said when we asked about it. In response to NBC News, the palace called the claim nonsense mm. and said it was, quote, unsourced and categorically untrue. What well, say you? Standard procedure, you know, for the, for the palace. I mean, it's, it's there. Actually, when they bother to issue a statement about a book, you know, you've struck a nerve. Uh, as I, as I said earlier, I've been covering the royal family for 50 years now, uh, shocks me to say it, uh, and uh, the sources that I have now are really unparalleled, and I, uh, they're solid, and uh, this isn't an authorized biography, you know, it is an unauthorized biography, and, and therefore much more accurate than what the palace would provide. You know, you granted anonymity to the sources yeah. so that they were able to speak freely. Is there any other information you can add to lend credibility to, to the stories that we're finding in this book? Well, it, actually, uh, we really have to provide context for what happened. Uh, as you may recall, when uh, Diana died, Camilla became the most hated woman in the U.K. Uh, it took eight years for Charles to convince the Queen to allow him to marry her. Uh, you might recall that when, during the wedding ceremony, they had to get down on their knees and tell the, uh, uh, beg forgiveness from the Archbishop of Canterbury for what they call their wicked sins uh, and manifold sins. Uh, it took another 17 years for uh, Charles, after they were wed, to, you know, finally convinced the queen to make this shocking and stunning announcement that she did uh, last year, out of, completely out of the blue. Well, it wasn't out of the blue. It was, again, an unspoken arrangement between the two of them, done behind the scenes by these men in gray that Diana used to talk about. Uh, Andrew was always the queen's favorite son. Uh, Charles was uh, in a position where he needed the queen to endorse Camilla as they approached the Platinum Jubilee, and these things converged. We, your sources are suggesting that this was a transaction. Yes. I, I think some believed that the queen, when she issued the statement saying it was her desire that, that Camilla would be queen consort, that that reflected a thawing of the relationship and a warming toward Camilla. Uh, you, uh, uh, you uh, some, argue that that's not true? Well, you know, she, uh, the problem is that the queen was practical, and she knew that Putting Camilla on the throne next to a Charles would be uh, problematic, to say the least. And by the way, Charles made a pledge to the British people to sell uh, them on his marriage. Originally, they would never make Camilla queen. She was going to be princess consort. And I know from the very beginning, and I've been writing about it for years, that he never intended for that to happen. He always knew that she would be his queen. And they're even talking now about dropping the consort from the title. She will be Queen Camilla. And I think the moment that's going to be defining uh, it during the coronation on May 6th 
is the moment when she is crowned next to him. I, th I think it's going to ruffle a lot of feathers. She's not popular in England. Uh, even after the Queen's statement, her popularity went from 14% who approved her as Queen to 50 overnight, but now it's starting to erode again. This is just one revelation in the book. Mm -hmm. you, you write a lot about Charles's background. Of course, those of us who watch The Crown right. know that he, of course, went to a very tough boarding oh, school. Yeah. Um, what did you learn about the way he was raised and also the relationship between Charles and his mother and father? Well, you know, now we have this notion of, of <clears throat> Charles and, and, and uh, the Queen having a kind of warm relationship, and they did toward the end of her life as she got much older. But he described her during his childhood, which was really kind of heartbreakingly lonely, as, as cold and aloof, uh, and, and Philip as a bully. You know, Philip reduced him to tears into adulthood when he belittled uh, Charles in front of, of other people. But as a little boy, you know, there's one moment, I think, that really spe speaks volumes, and that's when he was four years old and, and the Queen came back from her first tour of the Commonwealth, and he rushed up to greet m his mother, and she literally pushed him aside and said, no, not now, dear, more important people. And when, he, when she finally did give him the time, she stuck out her hand and shook his hand. This is in such stark contrast to what we saw Diana do. You may remember the pictures when every time she came back from a trip, she just swept the boys up in her arms. Uh, it, it, uh, the Queen never visited uh, Charles when he had a tonsillectomy, the flu, uh, when he broke his ankle falling down the stairs, when he had an emergency appendectomy at the age of 13. Neither Philip nor, nor the Queen bothered to leave Buckingham Palace to visit him in the hospital. So that was the relationship they had. And then finally, what are your sources indicating about this upcoming memoir that is coming from Harry? Uh, we now obviously have the title of the book and the, mm -hmm. the cover image. Are, are there nerves in, in Buckingham Palace? Oh, they're, 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 you know, the, obviously there are going to be bombshells in that book. Uh, the palace will not be happy. And as they're facing the coronation in May, it's, uh, it's obviously got them all on tinterhooks. All right, Christopher Anderson, thank you so much for your time. Great theater. The book is called The King. It comes out next Tuesday. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.